Hey everybody, so you already know I made a brick generator tutorial that with any curve it can make a brick wall with all these properties and uh, when I posted that, at least in early access, I got a comment saying, oh I can't wait for geometry nodes to get physics, which it will be getting and that is going to be sick, uh, because then we can tear down that wall. And I was looking at that comment and thinking, we can do that right now. I mean, it'd be nicer to do it in geometry nodes, but there's no reason we can't tear down walls. So uh, this is just going to be a quick addendum tutorial. Uh, check out the brick one if you want to have a brick wall, but it's going to assume you already know how to make a fucking brick wall. And uh, let's tear it down. Super easy, actually. Um, so where we left off, we have this brick wall generator. Again, it works with uh, any curve, but I decided to make it with uh, this curve so I can control like how much it's going along the wall, long story short. Um, and I want these bricks to tear down. So let's do it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do before setting this up is, uh, if you remember, uh, one step in this process is I took our original cube. This is the cube that composes the bricks, as you can see. Um, and I subdivided it a bunch just to get extra detail. Um, it's good, uh, but if we're doing physics on it, less geometry the better. So I'm just going to get rid of that. It does get rid of some of that extra distortion, but I'm going to get rid of it. Um, only other thing is the bevel node. We can enable it later. Uh, for now, I'm just going to hide it. So again, we have less detail. Okay. To get physics working with this, remember geometry nodes is just a modifier. So this whole thing is just a modifier I applied that makes a brick wall. I'm going to apply a cloth modifier after it, I guess above the bevel, technically. So first we make our brick wall and then we run it through cloth simulation. And you might be thinking, why cloth? It's a good question. It's kind of the best and fastest solver that does what we want it to do, even though it's brick, not cloth. Um, so with the cloth solver, we can go to the cloth options. There's a bunch of stuff. Let's just see what happens when we hit play. It falls because, you know, this thing's just succumbing to gravity all at once and there's no collisions, nothing. So it's good to know that it's working at least, right? If I uh, change something in the geometry node stack, which I guess I have to access through the modifier, like I'm going to make it, I don't know, I'm going to make it a shorter wall. It's still going to fall. It's just whatever. Uh, to make it actually work, we need to do a couple things. First of all, uh, our floor object, if you don't have one, just set up a floor. Uh, make sure this is a collision. So in physics, make it a collision object. And now uh, it's not doing it correctly, but it is interacting at least. Um, so we have our object collision. Next step, it needs to collide with itself so that the bricks can't pass through each other. Unless you live in a world where that is what happens, in which case it's fine. Uh, so with the bricks, again, that's the cloth solver. Go down to your collisions. You can see object collisions are enabled. If they're not, it will just pass through the floor. So we want object collisions, but also enable self collisions. And boom. I mean, it looks bad, but you, you can see that it's working. Um, and what it's actually doing here is this is all one cloth object, but different islands uh, in that topology, in that mesh, can be treated as separate objects that collide with each other, which is why this works. Uh, but it's looking pretty glitchy and stuff. So what can we do about that? Well, first of all, Collision quality, bring that up. It's going to be slower, but it's going to be better. And also for the quality steps, bring that up. So maybe that should make it a bit nicer, uh, but take it a bit longer to compute. Okay. Next thing we can do is you can see whenever I hit play, it kind of just explodes. And again, this works with any length of wall. It can be a short wall. Uh, it could be a long wall, whatever. It all works procedurally. Uh, but the point is, uh, you can see it all kind of just explodes instead of toppling like a brick would. Um, and this is because it's you have these bricks that are very close together, and there are gaps in between, but the cloth solver doesn't see that. It sees them as these intersecting things, so they have to explode away from each other. So it's this explosive thing. It's not too bad, but it's a bit explosive. Uh, to fix this, in these self-collisions, we want to say there actually is a bit of a gap in between. So for the distance, in other words, saying what's the minimum threshold to count as a collision, I'm going to take this and bring it down. I'll just divide it by three, so it's three times smaller. And you can see... Once this assimilates, it kind of becomes much more stable because now you can see it's actually considering these gaps and it's kind of like the bottom provides some structure as the top falls. So you can see this has much more structure to it. And uh, again, this gets much and much and much more accurate the more um, quality steps that we add. Only other thing I would do to make this look like a brick is it kind of looks like this thing's gliding on ice and it doesn't have that weight uh, to it that you would expect. Uh, we can just add that in by either increasing the mass of this or maybe a faster way is let's just add friction. So on the floor, uh, go to the, again, the collision settings. One's a collision, one's a cloth. Uh, for the collision, take the friction, just bring it all the way up. You could bring it not all the way up, but I find that 80 is fine. 
And you can see now when it topples over, so I'm just letting this calculate. Uh, when it topples over, it kind of behaves like brick and doesn't move much anymore. Um, if you're seeing any kind of glitchy behavior, where after this topples, some of these kind of keep vibrating, uh, just keep bringing up those quality steps, or you could do deactivation stuff. But that's the thing. And again, uh, the key insight here is uh, first geometry nodes is applied, then the cloth. So if I was to make this wall shorter, uh, which will actually make this um, calculate faster because there's less objects or bricks in some sense, uh, you can see it still works, which is kind of cool. Um, also, another thing, if you saw the tutorial for how to make bricks and I made the material, uh, you're going to notice that, you know, there's a material. Each brick is its own color. And we have these... Um, let me zoom in a bit. Uh, you have these kind of blotches I made. Uh, because the material is applied in geometry nodes and then the physics, you can see if we focus on this brick, uh, I was going to say as it falls, let's focus on this one. As it falls, it kind of has the splotch with it. I don't know why the other one didn't, but uh, you can see kind of moves uh, with it, except for ambient occlusion. Uh, so material is applied first, which is a nice thing. But you can see the bricks retain their color and all that is the point. And it looks pretty realistic, actually, especially once you add motion blur. Um, only other thing, which I guess isn't new, but again, because this is geometry nodes, and I guess I should also mention you can add um, your bevel now. It shouldn't mess it up too much, even if it's applied after cloth. The reason I do it after is the cloth simulation still keeps the original shape, so adding a bevel after shouldn't be any different. If you add it before, however, now we have extra geometry to calculate, and it's going to behave differently. As you can see, it's taking a long time. So that's why I add it after. So just these tiny little things can actually speed up your simulation quite a bit. Um, last thing I wanted to point out, as I was saying, this thing is 100% procedural. You heard me say it a bunch of times. Uh, but what that means is let's just use a different curve, like a uh, circle, to make kind of like a silo, as we did before. So we have uh, the circle. Uh, as I increase the radius, it... Hmm. Oh, yeah, we need to send it through the uh, resample curve. There we go. Um, as we make it bigger, you can see it's adding bricks procedurally. Uh, but as long as we have the cloth afterwards, you click play, it's going to take a while because there's more bricks here than there were in the original wall. Uh, but you can see it's uh, behaving really realistically. And you can also uh, make this interact with forces. So I don't know, like if you had a vortex for some reason... And I'll put that in the middle, like a tornado force that was like super powerful. And this is probably going to slow things down. Uh, you are going to notice, maybe I need to make it more powerful, but you're going to notice that it's actually going to work with our cloth. There we go. That might be a bit much. Let's bring it down to 30. But uh, you can make geometry nodes and cloth and all this and physics work together. So check that out. That's pretty cool. Um... Otherwise, I mean, is there much else to say? I don't know. Let's, uh, if we want to trim a circle, by the way, you have to make it non-cyclic. Just a little tip. So set spline cyclic, make sure that's disabled. And now we can be like, oh, how much of the circle do we want? And now we're simulating fewer bricks, which is good for the business. And I want to just calculate this for a bit because I haven't seen what the simulation looks like. It's actually behaving quite well. You'd think there'd be a lot more errors. <laughs> this whole household is sick. Um, but you can see, it, it's pretty cool. And it works with geometry nodes. So yes, um, eventually we're going to get the nodes directly in there. But for now, uh, we have a workaround. And did I talk for eight minutes? Good, because then you can add an extra ad to the video. But seriously, though, hopefully you learned something. And uh, yeah, physics, geometry nodes, they interact, just not as directly as they will probably in a couple months, uh, assuming that they add those nodes. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.